Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I'm wearing a little bit formal today. It's because it's pharmacist little time. As you can see from the title, I'm going to be talking about how you can manage the flu symptoms if you actually get them. What I will be talking about will mainly focus in terms in for Australia, but you can relate it back to Malaysia or any other countries as well, depending on what's available in the pharmacy or community pharmacy in your country. The reason why I'm making this video is because it's winter in Australia at the moment, so that means it's also the flu season. So usually around this time of the year, it's where people will come in and ask around all the same questions. So I've decided to just make this video so you can just answer every single question that you need or every single suggestion that you need uh, in order to make a choice as well. So what is the flu? The flu is a highly contagious viral infection that can cause like serious life-threatening illnesses or diseases if you don't manage it properly or if you're at a high risk group as well. It's really important to know this because I realize there's a lot of people whenever they present themselves with like flu symptoms, they're like, can I get some antibiotics? No. The thing is, antibiotics do not kill the virus. Antibiotics are there to stop the growth or just kill bacteria. You might ask, are there any antiviral medications then? Yes, of course they are, um, but they are only available from a doctor's prescription. So that one you need to see a doctor. The main focus of this video is me as a pharmacist. What can I do to recommend or give you any advices in terms of managing your symptoms? But disclaimer, this is mainly based on my experiences and also some of the tips or some of the things that I've done whenever I get the flu. First things first, Get your flu shot before the season. You probably might have seen like ads or news saying, please get your flu shot before the flu season. Uh, because the thing about the flu virus is that it changes every single year or it changes all the time. So the strain changes as well. Therefore, the vaccine needs to be changed as well. So now, uh, what are the signs and symptoms of the flu? Usually when someone presents themselves in the pharmacy, it's very obvious. They will just come in looking really tired oh no. and very obvious it's like you can hear the change in their voice. They will come in and say, oh, I'm feeling really tired. Uh, I have a lot of muscle aches and pains. It's really difficult for me to get off the bed. Um, I have really blocked nose or runny nose, I headaches or fever, sore throat, a dry cough or any sort of cough. Basically, these are like the very common symptoms if you actually get the flu. I get a lot of people saying that it just hit them like a truck or like I would just usually say that they get the whole package like the whole package of them just feeling really unwell Before I give you any recommendations if you have any of the followings make sure you check with the pharmacist first If you have any allergies, if you have any medical conditions if you have any medications that you're taking or if you have tried anything and it did not work for you. Hopefully you guys don't think that we ask you too many questions. It's because it's something that we really need to know to give you the best health care. Anyway, look, let's imagine you're walking into the pharmacy looking at all these medications that like literally lining up there but you don't know which one to choose. This is where I can help you. You can actually watch this video again while you're trying to select your product so that it kind of like helps you to visualize as well. So with the flu, we take the medications according to your symptoms. Uh, what I would usually say is if you don't have the symptoms, you don't really need to get any medications for it. Let's say I got a cough but I'm not feeling any pain or I'm not having any headaches, you don't need to take any like painkillers. You just need to take a medication that's for the cough, something like that. In the pharmacy, it is actually separated into sections. So this is another disclaimer. I'm just going to mention some brands, but they're just for information purposes. You don't need to get that brand. There are always generic brands, which are the cheaper one and also which works the same as well. So let's go to the first symptom, headaches or any muscle pain or muscle weakness. What you can take, the most simple one, Panadol or Nurofen. Panadol and Nurofen helps with reducing your fever, help with any pain. The extra thing that Nurofen can do is that it can help with any inflammation um, that you're having in your body. Just remember to look at the package at the back to look at the dosing and follow them accordingly as well because they're a little bit different. So the next symptom, nasal congestion or blocked nose, stuffy nose, runny nose. There's literally a whole section for it. I'm going to talk about some nasal spray and these are just some examples. I'm gonna name some brands. Some of them will be like Sudafed, Diamond Tab or Ultravin. For Sudafed and Diamond Tab, they are both to help unblock your nose and usually you use it twice a day. And also for Ultravin, there's this version which is a silver box. This one contains two ingredients where it helps to unblock your nose and dry up your nose as well. So this is more suitable for people if they actually get a lot of runny nose. But the most important thing about nasal sprays is that you can't use it for more than three days in a row. If you do that, you're gonna get something that we call rebound congestion. 
So what's rebound congestion? Rebound congestion is essentially you keep using this medication, the medication is causing the congestion, and then you kept thinking like, oh, the medication is not really working. I'm just gonna keep using it, and I'm gonna get more blocked. So it's basically a vicious cycle. If you can stop after three days, just stop using them straight away. You might wonder, I don't really like having something sticking up into my nose. Huh? Is there any tablet form? Yeah, of course, there are tablet forms. But for the tablet forms, you actually need to ask the pharmacist for it. So in Australia, before you go into the pharmacy, remember to bring your photo ID, your Australian driver's license, or your proof of age card, or if you're international, you bring your passport if you don't have any of this. Just, just in case. You'll know why if you need the medication. But for these tablets, if you get from the pharmacist, make sure you take it during the day. It's gonna make you more awake and more energetic. So try not to take it too late during the day. And they do have the ones off the shelf as well, but that one you need to try and see whether it works for you. So the next one, sore throat. This one also is another one where they have a whole entire section for it because there's literally so many things for just like sore throat. Lozenges, uh, sprays, or like the gargle. So for lozenges, you can choose any flavor that you like, but there's one specific one, like for example, like Flam or Betadine, they actually have like an anesthetic version. So basically what it does, it actually numbs your throat. What I usually do by accident and I always still do it is I always do it right before I eat. Problem with that is I won't be able to taste anything. I get really frustrated because I can't taste my food. But the really important one here is try to avoid doing that before drinking any hot drink. Because if you take the lozenge, it's numbing and you drink something hot, you won't be able to feel that it's actually a hot drink. And then you might actually burn yourself instead. So just be very careful with that one. There's also a tablet form where it's recommended by a doctor. It's the high strength aspirin. You get one or two tablets, you put it into the water about 20 ml. You kind of like let it disperse itself first. And then you gargle for about three to four minutes. You can swallow it if you want to, but you can spit it out if you don't really like, you know swallowing what you gargle. It helps to reduce the inflammation around your throat area and if you actually swallow it, it helps with other symptoms as well like any headaches or muscle pain or any inflammation that you have as well. But the problem with aspirin is make sure you take it after eating because it does cause some upsets as well. Next, it would be if you get any cough. So cough, it's a really annoying thing. So for a cough, this is also another section where there is like lozenges, syrups. These are the ones which helps you to liquefy any mucus to help bring up your phlegm if you have any or it helps suppress your cough if you have a really dry cough. The problem with the cough is we call it post viral cough. So post viral cough is basically like after you recover from the flu, you actually get a really persistent dry cough for two weeks at least. Um, that's actually really common. Oh my god, I had it before and I was like, mm, I don't really like it. I really, I really hated it because it's basically just kept constantly coughing. The problem is if your symptoms start getting worse and you're not feeling any better and it's getting really congested and really like dipped down there, you probably need to get checked with the doctor to see whether there's any uh, other underlying problems such as like a bacterial infection or like another chest infection that you have. So yeah, make sure you always get checked if you're not getting well after like one or two weeks. Now I'm like literally talking like individual individual symptoms but obviously who wants to take like three different things at once? So they do have like combination products for example. It's basically a combination product which helps with your pain, headaches, any like blocked nose or runny nose. It also helps with your cough, that's also another one. So yeah, if you have any questions just ask the pharmacist. I'm very sure they are very very willing to help you and just make sure that you tell them everything so that they can recommend you the best product for yourself. So now you got the medications, what else can you do? Number one, I'm very sure you need some tissues. Number two, if you are actually feeling very congested up here, you can get some nasal sprays. The one we call it a saline nasal spray, which is just salt water basically. And then they have a lot of like ingredients inside which helps to moisturize the inner lining of your nasal cavity. When you spray the nasal spray inside, it helps you to clear out the gunk inside much more easily as well. There's another one which is uh, vapor up. So you probably have used vapor up when you were young, like you put it on your chest and that kind of thing. If it's for a child, they can put vapor up like about two to 12 years old you put around the chest area or at the back so that they can inhale the vapor but for adults usually um, you get like a hot bowl of water let's say let's imagine my candle is a hot bowl of water you put about two teaspoons of the vapor up inside and then you get like a towel 
and then you kind of like cover yourself and then you inhale the steam so that it helps you make you like breathe easier and make you feel much more better as well so another thing that I would recommend is if you have vaporizers or if you have humidifiers at home make sure you use them because especially during winter times or if you feel like your room is really really dry by putting the vaporizer or the humidifier it makes your room much more moist so that it wouldn't be so difficult for you to breathe as well usually if you get any eye symptoms if it's like a flu your eyes feel really tired but it's very watery and it's also very clear if it's like yellow gunk that's like constantly weeping out that one it's a bacterial infection that's another topic but if it's just watery weepy kind of symptoms or signs you, you just need to use lubricating eye drops getting an antibiotic eye drop wouldn't actually do anything for you so um let's say you're at home what can you do obviously you need to rest 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 resting is so important to let your body recover itself um, there's a lot of customers that come in and say like i have no time i have an exam i need to keep working but it's usually because their immune system is really run down because they're so tired that's why they actually get the flu you need to take it slow and let your body recover and then that gets to my next point please drink a lot of water because you need to get yourself hydrated um, this is an extra one if you need any supplements to help boost your immune system to kind of like fight the flu much more better or to prevent yourself from getting the flu um, try to look for ingredients which contain like zinc, echinacea, uh, olive leaf extract, vitamin C not so much about the vitamin C, but um, usually zinc, echinacea, and uh, olive leaf extract, they, they are pretty good to help boost your immune system and then kind of like fight it much more better as well. In Australia, there's this brand called Biocycles, and the Armor Force is usually the one that always goes out of stock because it helps them to reduce the severity of the flu. So, usually these products are at the back with the pharmacist, so just go to the pharmacist area and ask them for it if um, they have it. And the problem with this tablet is that it's really, really, really huge. So if you want to attempt to swallow two at once, try not to no. because I choked on it before trying to, you know, swallow two tablets that's like this big. But I really want to say it does work for a lot of people. So if you really want to take that, you can actually take that to help boost your immune system. Anyway, this is the end. I hope you guys find this helpful. And if you guys like any more of this kind of information, just write it down in the comments. If you have any personal questions or more in-depth question that you need to ask me, just send me a message on uh, Instagram. No. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.